All right. So I'm going to show you a basic, very basic overview of Lightroom. Now, I'm on the Mac version, but uh, it should not make a difference uh, too much with the Windows version here. I'm not a professional YouTuber or anything like that, so this is going to be a one-take you know, kind of thing here. So the first thing you'll notice is I already have some photos here in Lightroom. Um, this is from an engagement session uh, a while back. Um, so you have kind of a few sections here. You've got your top bar, which has your library where you can quickly sort through photos. Your develop where you edit the photos. And you might have some other options, but to be honest, we don't really use those. On the left-hand side here, you're going to have catalogs. Now, I only use one catalog. I use one catalog for everything that's on my external hard drive. You have folders. Now, you'll see here it actually says external hard drive. Now, if you're on Windows, this might say D drive or C drive or something different. But on, Win on Mac, it'll just be the name of your external hard drive, which in my case is external hard drive <laughs> is the name. I have a folder on there labeled Lightroom. One labeled Info. Um, I do some price guides and stuff like that sometimes with people on Zoom, so I have a folder for that. Uh, photos, and then I sort by year, and then by month, and then usually by my clients. Um, or if it's a personal thing, I put it under my little family category. So that's how I sort everything. Now, I don't really use collections, but you can, for example, put all your five-star photos um, automatically in one of these if you want to find like, your favorite photos and stuff like that. Um, but usually I just use this folders category. Now, um, I'm going to run through as if I was importing some photos here. Um, now, I actually don't have any photos on my memory card, but I'm going to walk you through it as if I did here, okay? So the first thing you want to do is, once you're open to this page, you are going to put your SD card into your computer, or you're going to plug your camera in if you're doing it that way. I'm going to come down here to where it says import, and you're going to get this full main page. Now, if you don't have this, you're going to get this screen here. Click this drop down to get the full version. I think that's honestly just easier. So it's asking me over here, where is the source? So um, in this case, I do not have you know my memory card on here, but if I did, uh, it would show up and you would click on your memory card for your computer. Now, um, let's see here. I am just going to, for this test, what should I do here? I'm not going to click anything over here. Wait, you know what? Give me one second. Um, again, this is all one take. I, this isn't meant to be professional or anything like that. So I'm just going to grab some photos um, for my personal category here. Let's grab a picture of my son because uh, he's really adorable. I'm going to grab two of those. That's just on my personal collection just so we can use that for example. So you can ignore that step. So you'll see here if this was a memory card, you click your memory card and you'll get all your photos under here. Now for this example, I've got two photos and I always choose copy as DNG. This will copy the raw files if there's raw files or just copy the JPEGs if it's just a JPEG. Um, and if it is a raw file to convert it to a DNG, which is a different type of raw file, that'll save you some space and it'll run a little bit better in Lightroom. So now that we have it copy as DNG, which is what we want to do with the files, where the files are coming from, and what files we're selecting, which is all of them, we can choose where do we want it to go under the destination header here. So I don't want to put it under... Uh, one of the weddings I did, I would probably go under, um, actually, I'd probably start a new month because I did not have August set up here. So you can actually right-click where it says, your a folder above where it says 2023, create new folder, and I'm going to name it August. Okay. Um, and I'm going to choose that as my folder, so you'll see it'll create a new folder there. This is just how I like to organize it. Now, you can do it any way you want. But um, once you have it selected where it's going, where it's coming from, and the photos that you want, you can go ahead and down here and select Import. So now this is going to make a copy onto my external hard drive in that folder. Um, and 
it's not stored in Lightroom. Lightroom is just accessing those files essentially. And um, it's just telling it, hey, this is where those files are. Okay, so that's how you import files. It's pretty straightforward. Um, you'll see if I go over to my external hard drive, my actual computer part, not on Lightroom, you can actually see these files are stored exactly where they said under photos, under 2023, under August. But it's better if you do it through Lightroom than doing it manually because that way Lightroom knows where everything is. Okay. So then you want to go through and you go under develop module and you can start going through and playing with the sliders. Now, the way I like to do it is I like to go top to bottom here. I don't tend to use a whole lot of presets. I tend to go through the basic, the tone curve sliders, and I like to leave it on solo mode, which makes it so that when you select one, you go to the next, it closes the one above it so that you don't have too much mess down there. Now, let's say for the sake of this, because I'm trying to keep this short, my baby's crying. Uh, speaking of, let's say we've finished with this and we want to export this file. All you have to do is double click to bring back to the main library after you select the library folder there. You can select multiple photos at once by holding down the command button or the control button on Windows, I believe, while selecting multiple photos. You can click export and export and these are going to be your settings. Now, you can choose where you want it to go to your desktop folder, for example. You can choose if you want to rename it. You can choose if it's a video, some video settings. I don't do video. I usually do a 90% quality JPEG and sRGB, which is what most places are going to want for online. Um, and most phones are going to want that too. Most places are going to want that. Now, if you're uploading it to Facebook, you could do resize to fit long edge 2048. Or if you're uploading it to for clients, you're going to want to leave this turned off completely and just set it to 300 dpi, pixels per inch, and let it just stay the full quality of that image. You can add some sharpening in here as well, and watermarking if you want to add some watermarking. Otherwise, you're going to go ahead and hit export, and it's going to spit those files out for you. I'm sorry it has to be so quick, but my baby's crying, and i got to go get him. So I hope this at least answers some basic questions.